Bobby's a Borange, episode 38, featuring Michael Jackson. Ow! Really? No. Thriller! Oh. Thriller! Talk. You don't even know the word, dude. <laughs> no, anyway. I don't. That's <laughs> actually the only word I know in that song is Thriller. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have that song, too. Alright. Alright. <laughs> Bobby's a Borange. That thing. That comes up on the radio, and I'm like, Thriller! That's all I know. Okay. Hey. Right. Awesome. Hey. <laughs> oh, that's a porn. Thriller! <laughs> Thriller! Last week on Bobby's Borange, that was nothing. The week before that, Mother took over the radio show as Nintendo encountered a large, grotesque, bearded man with four nipples. Two weeks ago, actually three weeks ago, something like that, the Chosen Four went into the Stonehenge base. Jeff found his brother, Patrick, and Pooh killed something. This week, oh... Aha! I have done it, friends! I have finally found the Sword of Kings! Pooh, excuse me, you are interrupting the intro to this radio show. Just stay quiet, okay? Ah, anyway, this week, It oh, really took me two weeks of my small fool in life, but at last I have finally found it! I am so happy, everybody! Pooh? If you keep this up, we will not get to the actual show. Be quiet before I fire you. How dare you disrespect Prince Boo with your words? I will stab you. You can't kill me off. What's a, what's a radio show without a narrator? Oh, that is a good point. Very well, Mr. Narrator. One day, I promise this to you. I will stab you. Look at this, Boo. You have wasted time already. <laughs> Here on... Ah, it's daytime again. Man, that food was all right. That was cool. Didn't Apple Kid say something earlier about a book that we need to get or something? Man, if I wanted to read a book, we wouldn't be in a video game in the first place. Yes, friends, Apple Kid said he returned the Overcoming Shyness book to the Onit Library. Who? Where did you come from? I have been grinding so hard for the past weeks. Whoa, too hot for SM Dead. I finally found the Sword of Kings and it was so um. Yeah, yeah, we already heard the narrator. Great, now we're all gonna get asked for green cards all the time again. Green cards? My aunt, whose life's inspiration was to become a hospital desk person worker, got a green card also. I once got a red card for kicking Bill Lambeer in the shins. Okay, we've had our stupid discussion like always. Now we can proceed with the plot. It's starting to get a bit formulaic, isn't it? Hmm. Uh, all these books. So terrifying. Elf, help me, idiot box. Take me away from the scary ink and paper. There are only like six books in this library. I've never seen so many before. Hello, you come to see Bob. I mean, uh, welcome to the Onet Library. You're really quite late. Oh, uh, we are? I've been waiting here since episode two. Take this bloody map already. Um, we don't really need a map now. We have a player's guide. <sighs> Seriously, the player's guide joke was so last season. Anyways, we don't need your stupid nap map. Um, we need your stupid book. The one on overcoming shyness. Do you have a library card? I have a gun. Oh, <laughs> enjoy your book! <laughs> hey, Mr. Tendon Leader Person type guy. We got your book thing, Plot McGuffin. Give me that book. Yep, this book overcomes shyness. Hey, all you f***ers, get the f*** over here so I can read this f***ing book. 
You fork is a f***ing sleep while I read this book, god damn it. Wow, that was a very extremely colorful use of shyness. You heard him, folks. Let's hit the rock and get some sleep. Working through the night, Jeff fixed the can of Coke. It became... The can of Pepsi. Pepsi f***ing sucks! <sighs> that was uncomfortable. Thank you, Jeff. I don't know what we would do without your constant stream of short, extremely obvious statements. You're welcome. Well, I read your book. Turns out we're not shy. We're assholes. So easy to confuse the two, you know? Now go get us a f***ing book to fix that, god Ah, okay. Thank you all so much for bringing the Overcoming book. Everything is so much more pleasant around here now. Um, you know, I kind of liked them better before. I bet that Benefilinto Chende is also happy that all of her tender friends are nice too. We should exchange worlds with her friends. Benevolent. Why am I... <sighs> oh. Why am I haunted by this all my life? There she is. <sighs> Keeping your record alive, eh, Jeff? Oh, you guys, I can't believe this. Everyone started acting all nice overnight. It was totally cramping my style being the same as them. That's why I started drinking Power Thirst, the energy drink for people who need gratuitous amounts of energy. Now I feel like a fighter jet made out of biceps. Watch this. Whoa, you've changed a little bit. You're darn right I changed. I can't be acting the same as all these losers. Here, before you go, slam down this giant gulp of chocolate power thirst! This seems like a really terrible idea. It hasn't stopped us yet. But, I don't like chocolate. And how about Rawberry? Made with real lightning! Like a great tapestry. Vertical and horizontal threads have met and become intertwined, creating a huge, beautiful image. Have you ever stopped to consider how much your power has grown? Now you can call enemies and on and Tucson with one blow. You are drawing nearer to Gygus. Remember, when you are suffering hardships, your enemy is also struggling. By the way, you know where Pokey went. When this giant gulf of power thirst is finished, your adventure will continue. Believe in yourself and press forward. Ness! Paula, Jeff, Boo, I wish you luck with electrolytes, turbo lights, power lights, more lights than your body has room for. That was intense. Let us go into the hall, friends. Uh, not again. Good evening! I'm a talking rock! You can talk! Yes, yes I can! I just wanted to tell you that there is a talking rock ahead, so be sure to talk to it! Wait a second... If we talk to you... Wait a second... Wait, hang on... So if we talk to you... We would have talked to any talking rock anyways, right? And if we didn't talk to you, we would have never heard you tell us to talk to the talking rock. So you're basically completely pointless. Basically, yes! Wow, I'm glad we wasted two minutes of show on this then. kind of hurt your butt after a while. Pleasant. Really pleasant. Ooh, what is that thing in the distance? Mommy! Mommy, mommy, mommy! 
Oh. My god. Oh, it's a Pokemon! Oh my god. No, it... It... it it's that thing! Flash, 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 uh... Hey, Paula! Come on over here and do some tea brewing with me here today! Alright, Daddy, I'm so excited to make tea with you here today! You are doing so well with your sweet tea skills here today! You are putting in the sugar! Alright, Daddy, I'm so excited that you're watching me put the sugar in here today! Oh no, Daddy, what does that noise mean? I don't know, Paula! It could be bad news bears! There's a flying UFO saucer, Daddy! I think there's a door on it! That's most definitely a door, honey! I bet it will open! Alright, Daddy, you seem to be correct! The door of the shiny metal object from the sky is opening like a can of beans! Daddy, what are these strange white creatures? I don't know, Paula. They seem somewhat familiar, but in the same sense, I feel as if I have never laid eyes on them before my entire adult life and also as a child. Gentlemen! Behold! We are the Fobbies! Oh wow, Daddy, I'm so confused here today! I am too, Paula, as well as being fearful for my one remaining arm. We have studied your pitiful planet Earth, and it simply does not match the intellect that we have on our home planet of Fobbies. Did you just say anus in front of my daughter? Yes, no, Daddy, I heard the evil man say the dirty word in front of me, which is being your child, here today. We have studied your internets, and although they are much less superior to our outer webs, we have learned of something that we must have. You can have anything you want, as long as it's not my arm, or my daughter, or my arm. We have searched the galaxy for the most delicious beverage known to all species. Our results on Google have shown us that it must be the sweetened iced tea beverage drink liquid. You are the craftsman of such deliciousness, I presume? Oh yes, my daddy can make the best sweet tea in the whole wide world, and he even won the County Fair Sweet Tea Deliciousness Contest last year because it was so deliciousness. Paula, shut up here today or you'll take me away here today. Again. Oh shoot, Daddy, that's right. I will not talk anymore about how good your beverage is all the time forever. We can see past your tomfoolery in this matter. We must have your sweet tea beverage that you possess. Bobby, kill him and take his sweet tea. Paula, no! Oh no, my death. Now ransack his refrigeration unit and steal the remainder of the sweet iced tea beverage drink liquid. You killed my daddy here today, no! Sir, there only seems to be enough sweet tea left for one single glass. What? This is preposterous! Please, quickly give me that glass. I, I can't, sir. I drank it. You're, you're dead. Bring me the girl. I'm right here today. Yes, of course. You must certainly know the secrets to brewing this wonderful beverage you call sweetened iced tea drink beverage liquid thing. It's just sweet tea. Right, of course. The sweet tea beverage drink liquid stuff. You can create more, correct? I won't make you any tea until you bring back my daddy. He's dead and cannot possibly come back. Oh, well in that case I guess I'm just coming with you. Paula was forced to make sweet tea for the Fobbies for years. Their diets consisted almost entirely of sweet tea. 
so much to the point they inflated like balloons. After many years of this, Paula realizes that she's got to get out of there. She eventually stumbles upon a mass of orange sharpie markers, which she secretly begins to add to the sweet tea. Over the course of a few months, the Fobbies go from their old white selves to a newer orange color and begin to slowly become retarded. When the gods who held her in Sweet Tea Prison finally lose interest in doing their jobs and go run around and be stupid, Paula uses this to her advantage and escapes. She steals a rocket ship and flies to Earth where she used to live. But due to her horrible driving skills, she crashes her spacecraft into the Earth. However, one Fobby who never drank the sweet tea ever, because he didn't really care for it, decided to follow Paula and have his revenge. <laughs> I have found you, little girl. I could just kill you now, and my revenge could be complete. But you wiped out the intelligence of my entire race. So I'll wipe out the life of yours. Yes, this will do nicely. <laughs> your memory. Bloop. Hey, Paula. Uh, wait, what? What happened? Paula, I told you not to go running around after boys or something. This late at night. Come on home and we'll have some Pepsi, I guess. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. The Fobby who had followed her had reprogrammed her mind into thinking that he was her father and took the form of a human named Paul. He made a robot wife named Rosie and started a preschool as a cover-up for the alien activity that was going on in Tucson. Paula grew up to know and love her parents, completely unaware of the evil that was always under her nose. Why does that keep on happening? Anyways, these things, they're just... I don't know. These things are pretty much dead. them in half with that shiny sword you got. Do you have something to say about that? Well, I'm not sure why, but I'm definitely glad they're dead. Masochist. Look, a shiny spot ahead. Man, we've been recording for a while. Let's do that next week. Well, now that that is over, what will happen to the Chosen Four? Is that shiny spot another... Sanctuary? Yeah, it's not really that much of a surprise anymore, what with, you know, two left. Whatever! Let's all give a moment of silence for those poor, poor, cute hobbies. They had what it was coming for them! Their memories will live on in my heart for years to come. Oh dear, let me get the tissue! Anyway... Tune in next week for some more... Bobby's of Orange! No, seriously. Thriller! Thriller!
I'm going to guess we confused more than one person this week. <laughs> more than one? What makes you think that? <laughs> I, was, I was watching IRC, and there's so many people that are like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Does it not make sense? I think they get it. I think. It's just they're confused as to why... We did it? Yeah. For for the basic <laughs> rundown of what has what you've been given so far is that Paula had Paula um a, a fo okay the Fobbies were an alien race yes and they came down to Earth yes and they had searched um the entire galaxy for the most delicious beverage and it was sweet tea Paula's father was like the best sweet tea maker ever or whatever so they killed him and then they were like all right where's the sweet tea and then they're like oh wait this there's not any here. Then they're like, okay, well, Paula, you have to make it forever. So they take her back to their alien planet, Fabanus, and she's got to make it for the rest of her young life. And then one day she's like, crap, i got to get out of here. So she stumbles upon orange Sharpie markers, which yes. is unexplainable. And she puts them in the drinks, It's which, which is how the Fobbies go from being white to orange. And they're all round and bloated because they've been drinking too much sweet tea. The Sharpies make them all retarded. And she figures out how to get out because they're retarded and stuff. And then she escapes to the planet Earth again, which is where she was. But when she crashes, um, she's followed by one Fobby. And whenever the Fobby gets there, he uh, wipes her mind and morphs into a human. And he is her father in the preschool. And he makes a robot wife. And the preschool is just a cover-up for the alien activity going on in Tucson. But Paula doesn't know. Yes. Oh, so stupid. as we speak, Paula's dad is still that Fabi. So the Paula dad we met in the beginning of the series is a Fabi. But anyway, in other news, if anyone hasn't seen the Fabi's Reborn movie, you, probably you can download it and it'll only it. take you six years, or you can wait for it to be on Vimeo in like twenty. Someday. 25 hours. Or you could just not I, watch it. Yeah. yeah. You should watch it. <laughs> it is, it is what happens it. between um, episode 37 and today's episode. It explains why the characters are in On It and not Winters. Yes. Indeed. That's actually all it explains. That's so, all it explains, not, but... you're not missing anything, but watch it. It's in high definition. There's a floating hat. <laughs> <laughs> there is. Also, people who are cl uh, crying about plot holes... Trust me, everything will be solved shortly. <laughs> all these plot holes, all the stuff you're really? confused about now, will be resolved. Next week, probably, actually. But right after the oh, meeting, I figure yeah, out just... how to resolve them. <laughs> no, I already know how to resolve it. I know that. Shut up. It's funny. Oh. It's comedy. Thriller! <laughs> it's funny. Thriller! 